Okay, so this is something which is uh, very easy for most of you. A picture in picture, one on grayscale on the right side, in the left side, and then the same on with color on the right side. So this is something which all of you will put as Epstein's anomaly and severe tricuspid uh, regurgitation. I just want to sort of uh, put a small pause and uh, suggest to you that all tricuspid regurgitation need not necessarily be Epstein. So I'm just going to bring in one more condition here for a sake of differential diagnosis. So let us look at these pictures side by side. So on this is a movie which I have labeled as Epstein's anomaly. And you look at where the tricuspid valve is inserting. So everywhere for your reference, right and left is marked. So you know which is the right ventricle and valve and which is the left ventricle and the valve. And this is the tricuspid valve displays here. So here you see in that in Epstein's, the tricuspid valve is inserting at a much lower level. It is displayed downwards, while in tricuspid valve dysplasia, it stays at, at its normal uh, level where it's supposed to insert. So when you look at the anatomy of the tricuspid valve, there is a downward displacement of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. This is the hallmark of Epstein's anomaly. However, in tricuspid valve dysplasia, all the leaflets insert at the same level, normal level. So the downward displacement doesn't happen. Now, when Epstein's become more and more severe, the displacement also becomes more and more. So you have the tricuspid valve inserting at a very low level, and uh, it results in a very, very specific entity, which I'm going to show to you in a couple of slides later. So that is the first difference between a dysplastic tricuspid valve and Epstein's. The second is a simple radiological clue. When you look at the origin of the TR jet in color, you see both the pictures, and you will see that in Epstein's anomaly, even though we call it tricuspid regurgitation, the TR seems to be originating somewhere in the middle to apical portion of the RV because the tricuspid valve is displaced downwards. However, in tricuspid valve dysplasia, the TR will begin at the level of the normal tricuspid valve where it should be. It's a very simple thing. So you can see from the still picture very nicely that in Epstein's, the TR jet arises from somewhere in the middle of the RV cavity. Now, the third important part, we often forget the ventricle in Epstein's anomaly. So, in the Epstein's anomaly, the, right, the true right ventricular cavity tends to be really small, while in tricuspid valve dysplasia, as you can see here, the RV is just like a normal RV, it's there. It's a big, it's a normal RV. Sometimes you may even uh, find a dilated RV. So, what is the RV in the Epstein's anomaly? So, in Epstein's anomaly, the right ventricle is divided into two parts. This is because the tricuspid valve is displaced downwards. So, you have uh, the true right ventricular cavity, which is shown by this blue, and then you have the atrialized right ventricle. That is because of the downward insertion of the uh, tricuspid valve. So this is the, the green zone is the atrialized right ventricle, while the blue is the true right ventricle cavity. So it is um, quite present, uh, quite uh, intuitive that as Epstein's becomes more and more severe with more displacement, the true right ventricle becomes smaller and smaller. And hence, that's not a very good situation at all. However, in tricuspid valve dysplasia, the RV is normal sized. Right, so this is the three ways by which you differentiate Epstein's from tricuspid valve dysplasia. The level of insertion of tricuspid valve, the origin of the TR jet and color, and the size of the right ventricular cavity. There is one more method which we will not discuss in uh, the sake of simplicity. Now we have another entity, and here again you see the right ventricle and the left ventricle marked you see that the right ventricle is distinctly smaller compared to the LV, and it seems to be quite hypertrophied as well. And there is no VST. So this is, um, some people may just put this as tricuspid atresia, but if you look at the tricuspid valve very carefully, it seems to be opening. It's small, but it's still opening. And in this case, when you look at the outflow tracks, you see that the pulmonary artery is very small, small in size compared to the iota, and as we look at the color into the flow, and we can see that there is a reverse flow into the pulmonary artery, very clearly seen here in these pictures, 
that suggests that there is no anterograde flow at all into the pulmonary artery. It's all retrograde flow, suggesting that there is pulmonary atresia. So there is a small RV which is quite hypertrophied as well. You have small pulmonary arteries and you have a retrograde flow into the PA through the ductus arteriosus, suggesting pulmonary atresia. So this is what is called pulmonary atresia with an intact ventricular septum with a smallish right ventricle.